We're joined by Bills defensive coordinator, Bobby Babich. Bobby, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks, man. Uh, great being on your show. You know, finally, you've asked me to do it. You know, it's taken a long time, but now I'm good enough to be on the Eric Wood podcast. The last person to give me that uh, response was Kyle Williams. So you're in good company, uh, given, given the host crap about how long it took. And that's a good thing. It's a good yeah. thing that, uh, that that you wanted to be on there. Uh you guys wrapped up mini camp today. Sean had you guys practice the third day. Not always does he have. Uh, usually he lets everybody go that third day. It's, you know, not a surprise like he always wants it to be. But uh, he had you guys practice today. What was the philosophy behind that? Obviously, it's clear that we have some new pieces on our team. It's important just finishing the right way and everybody making sure we're t- we're wrapping it up, tying the bow on the package and all those type of things and trying to make sure that we continue to get the new faces and, and even the old faces combined with the new faces, um, get given another opportunity to get on the same page. And you know how important that is, Eric, as far as this is the ultimate team game. So we, we right. make sure we're all on the same page and, and, uh, you know, we're, we're reading from the same sheet of music before we get rolling on some bill stuff. How's the uh, Babbage family enjoying the uh, former wood household in Orchard park? We have enjoyed it. I think, what is it now? We've been in it six years. Yeah. I think it's six years this spring. We are, we have sold. Oh boy. Yeah. So six years though. Did uh, you make some good money on it? We did. We did solid. Good. Good. <laughs> we, did solid. Glad to hear it. we, uh, we're just moving a little bit closer to the village and, and things like that. So um, the house was tremendous. Uh, we did put a quarter quarter court basketball court in the backyard, nice. um, cement slab. You know, you'll be happy to know that your basement looks the exact same. That was that was my baby. And I knew I was like when we built the house, they were like, look, you're not going to get any of this money back out of the basement. I said, that's completely fine. I want a spot where I can be comfortable and chill down there. So uh, glad to hear it's in the same boat. How's your how's your pops doing? I miss that dude. He, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's just driving my mother crazy. He golfs every day. I was going to say, how much golf is he playing? Every day. Every day. So he lives on a course in South Carolina. Um, he plays every day. Uh, when my son gets, when we get down there and, you know, he gets the opportunity to take my son out who loves golf. Um, so he loves that. He's got his little group that he plays with every day. And, you know, so, uh, no, he's great. He's great. You know, he came up here for a little bit. Like I said, we're, you want to call it renovating a uh, new house. So they came up here to help out a little bit and, you know, he had a lot of pointers for me at practice. How much communication is there going to be between you and your dad? Because for him, like I, I was only in the in the NFL for nine years. Your dad spent decades in the NFL coaching. It's got to be so hard for him. Like, I know he loves this stage of life and I'm sure he's enjoying the time on the golf course. But I, I heard um, uh, Gil Bird one told one time told me, he said, coaching in the NFL is like a drug. You know, it's not good for you sometimes. You know, it's wearing you out. You don't sleep a whole lot, but you want it all the time. And and you swear you're not going to do it again the next time you get fired or the coach leaves. But then you do it again. So I know it's tough for him to be away. How involved and how much communication do you feel like there would be with you and your pops? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people say, like, like he's put his time in in the NFL, like you just said. And, and uh, you know, I think he's at the point right now where he obviously was in Buffalo for, for a while. So he kind of knows our scheme a little bit. So what he does, my brother-in-law is a quarterback coach with the Colts, Cam Turner. So what he does is he has the Sunday ticket. He flips back or if we're playing on different days, he watches both games. But for me, we have these note cards and I'll show you one that we use are very handy for us that we call them little grid cards so if you can see them but he took a lot of these with him when he retired and so he fills this grid card up with notes from the game as he would have as a coach so after the game he's like hey uh, let me pull my note card out real quick hey (laughs) uh, on that first and 10 around the 50 were you guys supposed to so that's that's the extent of it right just curiosity more than suggestions. Yeah, that's really cool. Would you say he's your biggest mentor in your coaching journey? Yeah, I would say for sure. You know, I was lucky. I got I got into coaching at a young age. I knew what I wanted to do. Um, then I, you know, subsequently got in the NFL at a young age. So a lot of the things that I could uh, that I had questions on or or 
quite frankly, that I didn't know it was easy for him to educate me on those type of things. So absolutely, he's been a great mentor for me, continues to be a great mentor for me and has really helped me not only just with coaching, but just how the how the business works and, and you know, all those things that come along with the NFL. Yeah, incredible to have the resource like that. Are there any other coaches that when you look around, you're like, OK, this guy helped me out or, hey, when I get to the combine or the senior bowl each year, I'm going to seek this guy out, maybe pick his brain. Other guys that have helped you out? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, like my position coach in college, Willie Matt Garza, kind of really shaped how I want to make a player feel. Mm. And he made me feel like I was probably a better player than I really was. And I think Mike has said this a long time ago uh, in press conference here. He said, confident confidence is a dangerous drug. Yep. It couldn't be more true. And like going in and I had him, I believe my senior year, maybe my junior and senior year, but going into my senior year, I felt like, you know, I was, I was at the peak of my game and he had a lot to do with that. Um, you know, obviously Sean is a big mentor. This is 10 years we've been together. You know, Rob Chodzinski gave me my first um, full-time job in the NFL with Cleveland. Right. Um, Mike Petton after that. Um, Love Pet. Yeah, Pet's a great dude. Pet's a great dude. You know, you meet up with different people at different positions to just pick their brain on a position, right? That's how I try to grow myself every year. So you talk about the combine, a guy like Ryan Nielsen, who's now Jacksonville's defensive coordinator, one of my good friends in the profession, Aaron Glenn, who I love, worked with him in New Orleans. And I just wanted to learn some D-line play outside of the Bills and just kind of make a connection. And I cold called Nielsen. Um, He had come out of it college into the NFL and I you know we'd watch the Saints tape you know on crossover tape and I was like man they do a pretty good job they're physical they know what they're doing all those type of things so we've continued to meet every year for probably five years at the combine um, you know but there's a lot of guys that I'm probably missing that that I owe a lot to there's a lot of wisdom that we could take from that little t- uh, that 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 conversation right there I, I loved what you said about your college coach and how he gave you that confidence. Well, you've been known throughout your time in Buffalo prior to being defensive coordinator as the guy who can maybe maximize talent the best. And and this isn't a comparison game across the board amongst Bill's coaches. It's simply the guys that you've spent time around have reached all pro status, pro bowl status under you where maybe they hadn't found it at that point of their career. We could talk about the confidence expert of it, but you know, guys like Poirier and Hyde. And then last year you hop in the linebacker room and you're with Bernard Milano. We hadn't even seen Bernard yet. And then he steps onto the field. So that kind of talent development in, in the NFL, it can happen sometimes. And then others, it doesn't. What do you feel like makes you great at being able to relate to the guys, get the most out of the players that you're coaching individually? I don't know that it's, I'm great, but the combination of getting the right players and it's credit to being, um, you know, having the reciprocal relationship to where a they know you have to make sure first and foremost, and you know this, Eric, is that like you have the player's best interest at heart, mm-hmm. right? and that I'm going to do nothing but work my butt off to try to help you succeed and get you to the highest level possible. I think you have to establish credibility, right? Mm-hmm. I think that comes in how you orchestrate something in football, like an individual period. It's easy to go into individual period, as you know, and to do drills, but if they don't apply to what you're actually doing or performing, we're, we're not serving the same master, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. And then, so you can show those guys, hey, here's you dr- doing a drill, and here it is backed up with it happening on tape, whether it's practice or in a game. Showing to them that you really care about them and them understanding that it's not going to be easy. I'm going to hold you to a high standard. Now you're building that credibility with what you're doing. And then I think the last thing, demanding from a coach's perspective, demanding the standard, like not letting anything slip. Like, no, we need to make sure that this is what we're doing. And if it's not the right way, I'm going to tell you it's not the right way. Yeah, that's a masterclass right there for young coaches out there that are looking to develop talent. It's build that trust. It's hold them accountable. 
A great coach always pushes you further than you're willing to go on your own. That's what that's why coaches are out there in any industry, football in particular, but in any industry, that's what good coaches do. And we only got to spend a certain amount of time in the facility together, but I saw it in 2017, continue to see it year after year. One of the guys that emerged last year was Terrell Bernard. And, you know, he had a breakout season last year. Unfortunately, he got dinged up at the end of the season, but that's a guy who played at a high level. And like we mentioned earlier, didn't know what we were getting from him because he had to set out all the preseason with a hamstring injury. And then he, He puts up one of the best statistical seasons for a linebacker in the NFL last season. Let's take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. That's Dano's Seasoning. It's never been a better time to yum yum get you some for a limited time only. If you buy two bottles of Dano's Seasoning at Walmart, Dano's will personally Venmo you back for the price of that second bottle. A special buy one, get one deal. Follow the link in the show notes to be able to get that offer and go out and get you some today. And so let me ask you this. Were you at all surprised with how quickly he hit the ground running in week one and how well he played, especially early in the season last year? You know, it's interesting. So I think everybody sees it. Terrell's not the biggest guy. He's not the longest guy. He's not the fastest guy. I won't say he's not the strongest guy because on the field, he's, he probably plays bigger not probably. He plays bigger than his actual size. To say it happened as fast as it happened, yeah, maybe that was a surprise. But when you really go back and watch his Baylor tape, he was doing all these type of things at Baylor. Yeah, he's a playmaker. When I was doing an evaluation on him, he's in the Big 12 doing this. It's not like he's at, I'll say, my alma mater, North Dakota State, where you're like, you know, FCS school, I don't know if it'll translate this, that, and the other. So playing against Oklahoma, playing against – and then – That leads into, you know this, Eric, you can get around a guy in this league. I get into interviews with him, and then I'm like, this guy's just got it. This, you know, six foot, I always joke around that he's 5'9". He doesn't like that. But, (laughs) but, uh, you know, the six foot guy who's not north of 230 pounds and, you know, is not what the prototypical linebacker looks like, but guy makes plays. Like, it is what it is. The expectation was that we set was he would be that type of player, like going back to what we talked about. Yeah. And, and he he took it, ran with it and, you know, dealt with the hamstring, as we all know, in the preseason and never looked back. Yeah. When I look at him and I watch him from the broadcast booth or I'm watching the tape, to me, he's a guy an offense has to game plan for the guys that are just solid linebackers. They make a lot of tackles at three to five yards. They maybe get back in the pass game, you know, but you can kind of attack those types of linebackers. Like those guys we're not even game planning for. The Bills have two in Matt Milano and Terrell Bernard that you have to game plan for because they will shoot a gap and they're smart and they're instinctive and they will shoot a gap and make a tackle for loss for four yards. And they can also sink back in coverage and truly make plays on the football. Not like maybe get a fingertip on it. Like they can make a play on the football and start running the other way with it. And so those guys, and we got two of them in Buffalo where you truly have to game plan for those guys. Let's give a quick shout out to prime. Try their electrolyte packets this summer, charge up your water with the electrolytes you need. Also get that great prime taste. All right. So I got to ask you, because I know you were close with these guys. How tough and how different it is is it in the facility without having Poyer and Hyde there this spring? Yeah, so obviously we were together seven years. Right. Um, and with Jordan, I was with him for 10. Yeah, because you were in Cleveland, right. Cleveland together prior. So, I mean, that's a decade I was with a player. I'm now a decade with our head coach. I was a decade with a player. So, very hard. You know, you you not only establish a relationship at work and a trust at work and a respect at work, you you truly care about each other and each other's families. And, you know, this will be a lifelong relationship, not only with Jordan, but with his wife, Rachel, and his daughter, Leah, and and, other people in their family. And with, with Micah, Amanda, and their two kids, like... We were just a couple of weeks ago, the hides are in town and we were just hanging out at their house to see the kids. I tell Mike, I don't yeah. care him anymore. I just want to see the kids. But so it was, it was definitely difficult. Um, you know, with Micah going into free agency and us knowing that that was a little bit different than us, um, having to move on from Jordan. Um, and I'll be honest, I had to wait about me and Jordan were texting, but I had to wait about two weeks to probably 
probably around two weeks to talk to Jordan on the phone. Mm. Um, you know, and just cause I didn't know how it ended up for me, not in a bad way, but like, I wouldn't know if I'd be able to carry a conversation without crying like a baby. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, let's dig in on a couple of the current guys. So recently on a podcast, I predicted that Greg Rousseau would be the breakout player. Not that he hasn't played well the last three years, but I said, look, when we're sitting in offensive line rooms, and I know he has a potential for a fifth year option, but when we're sitting in O-line rooms, we're looking, okay, who's in a contract year? Who needs to get the sacks? Who's going to be tearing it up each and every play? Greg consistently plays with great effort. I co- I covered him in college for ACC Network, covered a few of his games, loved him in college, love his game still. Do you feel like Greg Rousseau is setting himself up for a double-digit sack season this year? I will not predict the amount of sacks he has, but I will say this. You use the word setup, right? And that's what – and you know this, Eric – Like. All this work you put in in the offseason, all this work you put in through phase one, phase two, phase three, all you're doing is setting yourself up, right? I call it sharpening your sword. Like you're sharpening yeah. your sword. You know you're going into battle. That thing better be sharp. Greg's doing everything we're asking of him. We pinpointed a couple areas for him that I like to remind him every day when we're out on the practice field. Hey, Greg, this point, this point. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where Greg is an ultimate professional. He understands it. And those are the guys that you can that that you feel like are going to succeed. I will mm-hmm. never put an expectation on a player. We'll never make a prediction on a player. I'll never do that. But he certainly is putting in the work and setting himself up um, to have a successful season. You know, and you can't control all the variables, Eric, that right. go through the NFL. All you can control is your preparation. That's the only thing you can control. You're 100 percent right. And especially on defense, I always say you have to fly around every single play and hope the ball comes out for a fumble recovery and hope that the quarterback throws it your way when you're breaking on a route and hope that the coverage is good enough on the back end that now when you beat the offensive lineman that you're there for the sack and you have to just defense is different. You know, offense, you're kind of dictating obviously where the ball goes and whatnot on defense. You just simply have to go hard every single stinking play and then hope that you know, the stats, the results follow. And generally they do good things happen. You create your, a lot of times you create your own luck in this business. But uh, I like how you said that uh, where he's setting himself up and then we'll just see where the stats fall. Cole Bishop, Dwayne Carter, both drafted fairly early in draft. How have they looked through OTAs? I know it's a little tougher with Dwayne, especially in the trenches without pads on, but how have they look? How are they adapting to the scheme, the defense and everything? I'll say this, they're adapting. Well, we like to target smart football players and they're certainly smart football players, but you know, this era coming to the nfl is different it's right different. everybody's good i don't care where you played in college i don't care if you go all the way from naia up to the, you know sec like the nfl is different so they're doing a good job adjusting putting in the work that's necessary to try to get them where we need them to get to and again i'm not putting expectations on them we are literally day to day drill to drill meeting to meeting minute by minute and brandon did a good job identifying some guys that that fit what the bills want and we'll see where it goes you know training camp will tell us a lot yeah absolutely all right last one for me Last week, Rasul Douglas and Bernard both talked about your energy, your juice on a day-to-day basis. I got to see it in person. I still see it on game days. I know you bring it each and every day. I got to know, are you a big caffeine guy or is that just your mindset or what's getting you juiced up each day to bring that consistency? So for the record, it's a venti pipe from Starbucks. Yep. I'm not plugging anybody here with soy milk. Every day, and it's only one. Back in the day, I had, uh, you know, I'd have multiple coffees a day, but I don't do that anymore. It's one coffee a day. Um, I had the heart issue, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Fine. It was nothing. But so I've got to bring down my caffeine intake. I mean, I get to coach in the NFL every day. Mm-hmm. Like that is, and this sport is a passion of mine. Like, you know, a lot of people say they love football. It's I'm passionate about it. I just love coming to work and here in Buffalo. And um, so that's part of it is like this passion I have for this game to walk on on that grass, to go into meeting rooms is exhilarating to me. And then I'd say that the second thing is the consistency, right? We ask our players to come in consistent every day. Well, if I'm not the same person every day, like 
or you're going to walk into a meeting and be like, who are we get today? Who is this going to be today? Like, right. I'm going to be the same every day. At least you know what to expect, right, wrong, or indifferent. My wife would probably say that I'm an idiot and this and the other, but, but at least they know that idiot's coming into the room every day. Yeah, that's great. I was asked one time who was the greatest leader I had ever been around. And although I only spent one season around him, we've remained friends. We talk often. And he wrote the forward for my book, and that's Sean McDermott. And people asked why. And I could give you a bunch of reasons why, but I said the reason I feel like he's the best le- leader I've ever been around is because he's the most consistent person I've ever been around. And on a day to day basis, that rubs off on people and people notice. And Almost like the D-line rushing 10 times. If you come in and if they take a playoff, they might have missed their opportunity. If you come in and take a day off, well, your guys noticed that. Now you missed your opportunity. And so I would encourage you to keep that up because the players notice, the guys notice, people in the building notice. So continue to keep that up. Bobby, I can't thank you enough for the time. I'm so proud of you and your journey. Um, I'm I'm so glad that we were able to keep you as defensive coordinator this year. I know you were pursued highly and for good reason. So uh, glad to see you're back on the sidelines of Buffalo this year. Wish you nothing but success. And I hope you enjoy a little bit this time off this summer. And if you play your pops in golf, hopefully you can get the victory. Appreciate you having me on. and, And it's been great. Absolutely, brother. We'll do it again.